Good afternoon, everyone. First, I would like to thank the Philippine Institute for Development Studies for their active role and contribution in carrying out the study on the Philippines' implementation of the ADC Blueprint 2025. I would like to begin with what ASEAN means for the Philippines. ASEAN is a top trading partner of the Philippines, with exports amounting to 10.2 billion US dollars in 2020. During the COVID-19 pandemic, the region remained a key trading partner of the country, as the black comprised 23.54% of the country's total trade. As a region, ASEAN could not afford to embrace an inward policy. It has to expand regional integration and strengthen partnership with its trading partners. Thus, with the global economy still experiencing the negative effects of the pandemic, there is a need to further strengthen economic integration and collaboration with other trading partners. This approach will help mitigate the economic impact and disruptions to our people's health and livelihood and the economic activities in the region. By working together, ASEAN was able to further concretize the individual efforts of member states, ASEAN sectoral bodies and dialogue partners towards ensuring the smooth flow of essential goods, as well as minimizing disruptions in our supply chains. This cooperation was evident and instrumental in the development of the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework and the signing of the Memorandum of Understanding on the Implementation of Non-Tariff Measures on Essential Goods under the Hanoi Plan of Action on Strengthening ASEAN Economic Cooperation and Supply Chain Connectivity in response to the COVID-19 pandemic among others. ASEAN also provided an avenue for member states to discuss and recalibrate respective policies, especially on strengthening our supply chains in the new normal, to be more resilient to any similar situations and to promote complementarity in our regional supply chain connectivity. Now, what are the key accomplishments of the AEC that are important for the Philippines? The ASEAN Economic Community 2025 is an aspiration held by 10 ASEAN member states to be, by year 2025, a highly integrated and cohesive economy, a competitive, innovative, and dynamic ASEAN with enhanced connectivity and sectoral cooperation by remaining resilient, inclusive, people-oriented, and people-centered, and becoming a global ASEAN. In the establishment of a free trade area, ASEAN has been focusing on further facilitating trading goods in the region. ASEAN has streamlined the origin certification and verification procedures for the granting of tariff preferences. It has simplified the paper-based and electronic certificates of origin, or Form D, and implemented the ASEAN-wide self-certification scheme. It has come on board of the live environment implementation of the ASEAN single window for the exchange of e D. In addition, ASEAN Solutions for Investment Services and Trade was also launched. This is an electronic platform for resolution of implementation issues raised by ASEAN-based businesses. ASEAN has also endorsed the guidelines for the implementation of ASEAN commitments on NTMs on goods which provides a framework on transparency and management of NTMs. In addition, ASEAN developed the NTM Cost Effectiveness Toolkit, which will provide a framework to review the cost effectiveness of existing NTMs of ASEAN member states. Recognizing the growing role of the services sector, ASEAN continues to further integrate and boost the competitiveness of the said sector through liberalization efforts such as the ASEAN Trade and Services Agreement. The ATISA will enhance and supersede the ASEAN Framework Agreement on Services signed in 1995 and facilitate the region's expanding services sector by providing a rules-based framework to increase supply chain roles, trade and investment clause, and reduce barriers, as well as promoting participation of micro, small, and medium enterprises. ASEAN also continues to facilitate trade and services through strengthening implementation of mutual recognition arrangements in professional services in sectors such as engineering, architecture, accountancy, surveying, medical, dental, and nursing services. Outside of this, ASEAN continues to engage in other critical areas that impact trade such as interactive property, competition policy, TBT, SPS, and many others. 
efforts range from cooperation to the establishment of frameworks for mutual recognition. Altogether, these initiatives improve the investment environment in the region. These regional accomplishments complement the Philippines' goals under the PDP, which are, among others, to sustain a sound, stable, and supportive macroeconomic environment. We welcome the findings of PIDs, which highlights the areas where the country outperforms other member states and the areas where we, need, where we may need to work on. Next is how has ASEAN helped us expand our trade relations? Under the ambit of ASEAN, the Philippines has expanded its trade relation through the seven FTAs signed with external partners, namely Australia and New Zealand, China, Japan, Korea, India, and Hong Kong, China. These arrangements expand the country's trade and investment relations beyond bilateral arrangements made with Japan and the European Free Trade Association. On November 15, 2020, the Philippines also signed the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement with the ASEAN member states in Australia, China, Japan, Korea, and New Zealand. Considered as the world's largest trading bloc, the Philippines' participation in RCEP through ASEAN provides an opportunity to improve the country's trade balance, increase welfare, and lower poverty incidence as early as, early as its entering the force with significant improvements by 2030. Of course, ASEAN plus one FTAs will nonetheless coexist with the RCEP agreement and will continue to be implemented despite the latter's entry into force on January 1, 2022. Now, what are the areas for improvement that ASEAN, particularly the Philippines, should focus on? We acknowledge the recommendation on the need to improve performance in the areas of competitiveness, innovation, and inclusive participation. Together with the inclusive innovative industrial strategy, which the authors mentioned, the DTI is implementing the following programs to support local industries and businesses innovate, be competitive, and participate into the global value chains. And they are one, shared services facilities, second, ease of doing business, third, doing business in free trade areas, fourth, Philippine Halal Export Development and Promotion Program. Fifth, Philippine Export Competitiveness Program. Sixth, the Regional Interactive Platform for Philippine Exporter Plus or Meeples. Another program is She Trades Philippines Hub and also Startup Filipinas. Alongside the programs mentioned above, pursued by the national government, there are several economic reforms that have been undertaken and currently being done. The Philippines has already passed the Republic Act No. 11534 or the Create Law, which took effect on April 11, 2021. Other pending amendments, such as the Public Service Act, Foreign Investment Act, Retail Trade Liberalization Act, and the Internet Transactions Act, are in the pipeline and once passed are expected to encourage more investments in the country. On FDI, according to UNCTAD report, FDI in the Philippines rose by 29% in 2020 to 6.4 billion US dollars, backing the decline of the Southeast Asian neighbors and of the world. The Philippines is among the very few countries which experience an increase in FDI, such as China, Japan, India, Sweden, Spain, and Israel. For 2021, the Banco Central of Filipinas has reported that FDI net inflows grew by 139.5%, that is to $808 million in March 2021 from the $337 million net inflows recorded in the same month last year. The favorable performance in March brought a cumulative FDI net inflows to $2.4 billion in the first quarter of 2021 higher by 45.1% than the $1.6 billion net inflows recorded in the same period last year. The increase in FDI was mainly due to the 113.2% growth in non-residents net investment in debt instruments to $1.4 billion US dollars from $671 million. Likewise, reinvestment of earnings improved by 5.4% to $225 million from $213 million comparable year ago level. On research and development, the authors may want to note 
that the Philippines has a strong legal and institutional framework. Among others, we have the Philippine Innovation Act, Philippine Startup Act, Technology Transfer Act, and a comprehensive IP regime. To complement the implementation of the Innovative Startup Act, which was enacted in 2019, the DTI has established regional inclusive innovation centers in four pilot regions, namely the Gaspi in Region 5, Cebu in Region 7, Cagayan de Oro in Region 10, and Davao in Region 11. In addition, there are currently 100 innovation technology support offices or technology innovation support centers located in various state universities and research institutions which support the research and development activities in the country. On IPR, the authors may want to note that according to the 2021 Global Innovation Index, Philippines ranks 51st out of 132 other economies. Despite going down a notch in the ranking, the country remained on the list of five nations that made significant progress in innovation performance over time, together with China, Turkey, Vietnam, and India. The Philippines ranked fourth among 34 lower middle-income group economies and 11 among the 17 economies in Southeast Asia, East Asia, and Oceania. On e-commerce, the Philippines has seen 12 million new digital consumers since the start of the pandemic, of which 63% are from non-metro areas and 99% say that they intend to continue using these services going forward. Overall, the Philippines was the fastest growing market in the region, driven by strict lockdowns as well as tipping point on the adoption of certain digital services. The Philippines 2021 gross merchandise value is expected to reach a total value of 17 billion US dollars, a notable 93% year on year service. This tip increase is underpinned by 132% growth in e commerce. Looking at 2025, the overall internet economy will likely reach 40 billion US dollars in value. On energy, the authors may want to note that the target of ASEA is to increase the component of renewable energy to 23% by 2025, consistent with the endorsed ASEAN Plan of Action for Energy Cooperation Strategy. On mineral sector, according to the DNR Mines and Geosciences Bureau, the country's nickel industry remained resilient despite the pandemic with a reported increase of 4% in production and a 22% rise in export value in 2020. The value of the nickel industry's direct shipping ore was 38.86 billion pesos in 2020 against the year earlier which is at 31.79 million pesos. I hope that the information and updates I shared to you this afternoon would be relevant in assessing the country's performance as we work towards the realization of APC Blueprint 2025. Again, thank you very much for all your support.